The time will come when with elation you will greet yourself arriving at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you all your life, whom you ignored for another, who knows you by heart. Take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your own image from the mirror. Sit, feast on your life. Thirty years, 10,957 days, 262,968 hours, three decades of work, three decades of preserving, stimulating, and celebrating Cayman's heritage, arts, and culture by the Cayman National Cultural Foundation. Who are we? We are... Guardians. Versatile. Multifaceted. Colorful. Expressive. Passionate. Cultivators. Empowering. Inspired. Pride. A mecca. Inclusive. You! The reach of our mission extends to all of the Cayman Islands and embraces every art form. We educate through practice, publications, workshops and training mentorship, competitions, exhibitions, pageants, parades, displays and artistic grants. We conserve and preserve our tangible and intangible cultural heritage, our language, cultural enactments, music, rituals, paintings, craft, properties such as Mind's Eye, the home of visionary Caymanian intuitive artist Gladwin Bush, also known as Miss Lassie. We document through research and publication of journals, play scripts, poetry, prose, film and video and production. A country that does not value its arts and culture has no respect for itself. And value is not measured in platitudes, but the percentage of our gross resources we allocate to the creative education of our people. But let us start at the beginning. The Cayman National Cultural Foundation started really with a casual conversation between Jeff Creswell and myself. Uh, Jeff um, was, uh, if you like, the leader and certainly the director of the In Theatre Company, a group of three or four Caymanians, including Dr. Frank McField, Anita Ebanks and Bendel Hydes. And they got together and started producing West Indian plays. Up to that point in time, a lot of plays produced had, had originated in England as opposed to the West Indies. The Inn Theatre was so called because they performed initially at the Holiday Inn in the conference room and then subsequently at Royal Palms in their conference room. And Jeff said to me, um, we've had somebody approach us to say that they're willing to build a theatre for us and we want to know how much it would cost. Um, Jeff had identified Mrs. Harkwell as being a benefactress to provide the land and also the funds to build the theatre. The studio theatre, now being complete, needed to be owned by an entity at Mrs. Harkwell's bequest that belonged to the people of the Cayman Islands. So in October 1984, the Cayman National Cultural Foundation was formed and the Inn Theatre Company changed their name to the Cayman National Theatre Company. After three years of construction beginning in 1983, the F.J. Harkwell Cultural Center was officially opened with a week-long celebration in December 1986 with the production of The Sound of Music. In 1989, CNCF recruited award-winning actor-director-designer Henry Mutu to help the organization creatively refocus on its mission. The team immediately set about recontextualizing its role seeing it as one that, above all else, must pioneer the type and level of cultural thinking that will assist Caymanians to achieve cultural and creative self-actualization. I think what the importance of the foundation, we have to be here, we have to remain here to see to it that the host culture, those traditions, those, those reenactments, those enactments, um, whatever they were that made Cayman, Cayman before 
a whole lot of the, the influx of other people. Um, I think those things need to be looked at, they need to be preserved, and they need to find their place at the center of any emerging culture that is going to happen. In 1991, CNCF added Marcia Mutu, a professional theater artist and qualified arts manager. Together with the oversight of the CNCF board and the invaluable contribution of talented and hardworking staff, volunteers and sponsors, CNCF has managed to build an enviable artistic legacy for Caymanians to build on. We want to hear from people. We need their involvement. We need them to volunteer their time, their talent their ideas, their wishes, their dreams. Um, they need to contribute that to us and we, in return, want to help them to, to grow whatever those ideas are. CNCF has diligently followed its mission initiating creative projects that, over the years, have put heritage, culture and the arts at the very centre of the national consciousness. One such project documents the invaluable cultural and artistic legacy of visionary intuitive Miss Lassie. The Mind's Eye Project is the ongoing conservation of Miss Lassie's paintings and historic home, which was placed on the 2012 World Monument Fund's watch list. I know the faults of my work so far where painting is concerned. I do not make the nose of my faces like the nose of the human. But I paint it as it appears before my mind's eye. It's not of some off-site layout. Whatever it is, I paint it as I see it whether it's wrong or whether it's right. There are only a handful of such artists whose spirits are so deeply interwoven with their homelands. Miss Lassie is your great treasure and one that can give back honor and respect to Cayman culture in a way that enchants visitors and native Caymanians for many generations to come. We haven't really looked into the real significance of the kind of legacy that Miss Lassie has left us. And, and, and it's really very difficult to, to express how important it is to kind of quantify that legacy. I salute and praise your resolve to preserve and to treasure Miss Lassie's creative legacy for future generations. In doing so, you have protected what will surely be an oasis for folk and visionary art lovers worldwide and underscored your value of a true daughter of Cayman. This act will also send a very positive and empowering message to young Caymanian people who struggle to search for their own creative voice. Since 2001, CNCF has published the Cayman Islands Arts and Culture Journal, Foundation, appropriately named because that is exactly what arts and culture are to a society, a foundation. Musical recordings by Radley Gorzong and the Happy Boys, Aunt Julia Hyde's Northside Kitchen Band, and Cayman's country music crooner Roy Bodden all celebrate the Caymanian music traditions that are important elements of our culture. A few years back, we produced the double CD 
album, The Traditional Music of the Cayman Islands. And following right on the heels of that, then the, the Folk Singers was founded. As it is right now, we have um, approximately 22 songs in the repertoire, the majority of which are genuine Cayman songs. Uh, I'm pleased to be a part of that. I'm pleased to, to be a part of the movement that says we're bringing Cayman's uh, culture and our songs and our, our you know, spoken word, our oral history, our traditions. I'm pleased to be a part of that. We're bringing it out now into the forefront where all can see and enjoy. <laughs> Our many productions include stage plays and the popular pair, Gimme Story, the International Storytelling Festival of the Cayman Islands, and Run Down. I listen to that show. I don't, I don't hear, hear him agreeing with everybody. Well, you can't hear nothing. Because all day long you locked up and made a house come for the to chips and watermelon soda. Yeah. CNCF nurtures young talent through its education programs such as Young at Arts. The next generation are our key to continuing Cayman traditions and culture. We need to ensure that young people are given the opportunity to express themselves in an artistic way for the world to see. Every CNCF program has an opportunity for youth to get involved. We also have some very specific youth-oriented programs Young at Arts is actually the umbrella that covers all of our youth programming. We also have the Summer Arts Camp, and it's kind of like an introduction to the arts, and also it is a program that focuses a lot on Caymanian heritage. Another program that falls under Young at Arts is Young Image Makers. We have anywhere from 45 to 75 films entered each year into the program, and we always select our top 20, and that are eventually premiered and of course, at the end of the premiere, we award two students um, with trips off island to further their education in film. K-Fest is the Cayman Islands National Festival of the Arts. We've been doing it since 1995, and it is certainly the most inclusive arts festival in the Cayman Islands. Now, this year, K-Fest is in three parts. The National Arts and Culture Awards, and of course, then there's Dress for Culture, and Red Sky at Night. In 2005, Dance Cayman was the only Caribbean representation at the Aberdeen International Youth Festival in Scotland, joining more than 15 other arts groups from Canada, Israel, Ukraine and more. In 2007, CNCF was named the local coordinator of the Travelling Caribbean Film Showcase. It selects works in their original language for distribution across all the countries of the region and for the past seven years, CNCF has screened TCFS selections here. Additionally, the Cultural Foundation offers its Grants for the Arts for individuals, groups and organizations to help further their development. Through our Arts and Culture Awards, we recognize those who attain a high level of excellence in their artistic discipline and contribute to the arts, culture and heritage of the Cayman Islands. Part of understanding who we are today is understanding who we were, where we came from. The people are the heart of a cultural body and a body needs a heart to survive.